And good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Cheddar's Opening Bell. I'm Baker Machado in New York. The Trump presidency is going to end on January the 20th, but his impact on the Republican Party, well, that's going to last well beyond the day that he leaves office. So I'm joined now by Jennifer Horn, the Lincoln Project co-founder and former chair over at the New Hampshire Republican Party. Uh, Jennifer, great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Uh, uh, there's a growing number of lawmakers, especially over the weekend, that we've seen coming out telling President Trump to concede and even outright congratulating President-elect Biden on his win. I mean, that was Pat Toomey who said that over the weekend, Lisa Murkowski as well. Now, these aren't the most Trump-friendly Republicans out there, but what does that indicate to you about right. the party? Well, it certainly indicates that those in the party are coming to a realization that this election is over. Uh, but make no mistake, there are, there are no heroes in the Republican Party today. There were no heroes coming out this weekend to acknowledge uh, Joe Biden as president-elect. This election has been over since it was called four days after election day. There has been no evidence, and people should understand this, there has been absolutely no evidence whatsoever of any voter fraud, much less widespread voter fraud that could overturn millions and millions of votes, which is what it would take uh, for Donald Trump to win this election. Uh, the Republican the Republican Party has unfortunately abandoned any sense of character or integrity when it's come to this election, uh, and, and frankly, when it's come to Donald Trump. Um, while it's, it's encouraging, I suppose, to see some of them finally coming out and acknowledging what the entire world has known for a couple of weeks now, um, we shouldn't give them credit like they're doing something extraordinary. Every single member of the party should have been congratulating President-elect Biden two weeks ago when we knew that he was going to be the next president of the United States. Uh, Jennifer, th there was great reporting in the Washington Post over the weekend, essentially saying that President Trump might, the moment that Joe Biden is sworn in, announce that he's running for 2024. And he's also yeah. sort of given the blessing for Ronna McDaniel to be the, the head of the RNC for another term yet again. If that happens, does that give you a sense that President Trump is going to continue to have this very firm grip on the party, at least for the next four years? Well, I, first of all, it's interesting that he gave his endorsement to Rana uh, before she's even indicated that she's going to run for re-election as party chair. I have no idea what her intentions are. Um, but, you know, look, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if Donald Trump announces that he's going to run in 2024 or not. His grip on the Republican Party um, is about as firm as anything we've seen in politics in a very long time. Um, the Republican Party has some really difficult choices to make, and they won't make them immediately. They won't make them in January at the next RNC meeting. You know, it's going to continue to be the party of Trump for a very long time. But at some point, if the Republican Party wants to be uh, a serious, influential, uh, leading uh, voice in American politics, they're going to have to eventually choose between Trumpism and democracy, Trumpism and America, Trumpism and the Constitution. Uh, what Donald Trump has created in this Republican Party with the full cooperation of Republican leaders like Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy and Ronna Romney McDaniel and a whole lot of others um, is a party that is as close to authoritarianism as we have ever seen in the history of our country. Um, it undermines democracy. Uh, it, it undermines the constitutional cornerstones of our country. And frankly, it puts us in great danger on the world stage. Um, there is no path that I can see for the Republican Party going forward unless they are willing to fully denounce both the damage that Donald Trump has caused in this country and the role that they have played in allowing that to happen. And I don't see them doing that anytime soon. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, it's hard to see in terms of reading the tea leaves of, uh, of any change happening. And I guess maybe our first case study on that is going to be these Georgia special elections in January right. because we've been seeing Sidney Powell and others, even though Sidney Powell not part of President Trump's legal team anymore, uh, essentially almost wanting to burn down the situation in Georgia, not wanting to go vote, right. all of this. Does this have repercussions for that race when Republicans need President Trump's voters to go out and turn out? But if President Trump is kind of dissuading interest in that, does that affect them in terms of potentially keeping right. the majority of the Senate? 
Well, for, uh, certainly um, uh, Donald Trump suggesting that his voters should not turn out and vote is could potentially have an impact in any race, because we know that for the Republicans, uh, it, we, we have to remember Donald Trump got over 70 million votes in this election. Um, and while his base does not account for all of that 70 million uh, votes, that base of support is one of the reasons why Republicans are so unwilling to stand up and do what's right and stand on the right side of history uh, with this president because they are afraid of losing them. So uh, absolutely, that could have an impact. But we also have to remember that Georgia is a very high bar for Democrats to win. It's going to be an extremely difficult race. Does not mean at all that it's impossible. There are a lot of opportunities. The Lincoln Project, obviously, is going to be playing in that race as well. There are you know, a lot of opportunities opportunities for people to um, get involved and to influence it. But um, if the Republican Party loses the uh, Trump's base over time, that will kick any sort of uh, support or ability they have to, to maintain a party completely out from under them. It's all they have right now to, to build on. Um, but whether or not that's really going to change the outcome in, in Georgia, I think it's a little it's more complicated than that. Probably too early to call that. Yeah, that's a very good point, because history not on Democrats' side in those special elections right. in Georgia, especially in the South, have never done very well in those. Uh, long term, Jennifer, President Trump obviously has the role of kingmaker, essentially. He can endorse he and choose whoever he, he so chooses. If the Republican Party wants to nominate maybe not the most pro-Trumpian Republicans for the midterms in 2022, right. what sort of divide do you start to see in those midterms from Trumpian candidates and then and then normal establishment Republicans. Well, that's exactly that's exactly right. That's exactly what's going to happen. Donald Trump, regardless of whether he says he's going to run again or not, is going to be the person who has the most influence over the Republican Party and in their primaries. Uh, you know, what the Republican Party needs to do is something I suspect they do not have the stomach for, and that is that they need to stand up to the president. They need to cut him loose from the party, let him go, let him build his own party, let him build his own media empire, let him do whatever he's going to do, and they need to to understand uh, that the only way that they can serve the Constitution and serve the people of the country is to fight in these upcoming cycles, not just the midterm, but for many cycles after that, fight to, to retain and to kind of win back any, any position of principle that they used to have as the party of Lincoln. And that's going to mean losing a lot of races along the way as they try to sort of purge the party of the most extreme elements uh, in the far right. But if they aren't willing to do that, uh, again, they're going to be the party of Trump for a generation. Uh, and that is extremely damaging. It's not just divisive, it's dangerous when we send people to Washington who embrace the principles of this president and, and this presidency. Yeah, we're probably going to see a lot more Marjorie Taylor Greens as a result of that. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect example. Exactly. Yeah, Jennifer Horn, great analysis. Thank you so very much for coming on this morning. Lincoln Project co-founder and the former chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party.